Hi, let's talk about alternative text. Alternative text uh, mainly benefits people who use screen readers. There are two ways you can do it on Google Slides, you can do it on PowerPoint, you can do it when you're embedding images in email, you can do it on Blackboard, on Canvas. And so I'm going to show you how you do each of these. So on Google Slides, to do alternative text, the first thing I do is I actually just right click on an image. So you insert an image and then you right click on it. And then when you right click on the image itself, you'll get a lot of options like cut, copy, whatever. But the one that you want to look at is alt text. And you can also, the shortcut for that on a Windows computer is control alt Y. I don't know what it is on a Mac, but right clicking should work in either way. And then it'll give you a box called alt text and it's uh, got a description box. And that's the one that you need to fill out to describe the image. And you wanna describe the image in a way that if someone, whatever details someone needs to see, you don't need to describe every single thing in the image if some of the details are not important. So for example, for this particular image, um, I talked about that it's accessibility depicted by a collage of a person with a hearing aid, a person on a wheelchair, a uh, person um, wearing dark glasses. I didn't really talk about like the little plants that are there. I'm not sure why they're there, but I did talk about the ramp and I did talk about uh, the traffic signal. Um, as you can see on this image, there are three arrows pointing at three different things. One of them is the alt text description. description. Another one is the notes section of, of the slides. And you can have a very short description on the alt text and you can have a longer description in the notes or you can do them identical. Sometimes what you're trying to describe is like a very complicated image and that's too much to put in the alt text box and you can describe it more in the notes. Um, the third thing that you can see the arrow pointing at is what I've got written, which is the uh, citation for the image. It's an image generated by Dali by Apo.com. And that's something that everybody would see, um, whether they're using a screen reader or not, because it's just a citation. So that's not the place to describe the image. This is just a citation that you should put like where you got the image from. Another example is this video screenshot that I'm showing. And I'm just showing how this is different because I'm showing a screenshot of something else that I'm describing. And what I need the person who's viewing this to benefit from at this point is what I'm trying to point them to, which is where the what's happening on the screen, but also like the fact that I'm pointing at the CC button and the closed caption text, but not so much the text itself is not that important. You know, so point out what's important for the person to look at. Now, alternative text on PowerPoint is actually a little bit easier than it is on uh, Google Slides because Microsoft's accessibility is a little bit better. Again, you insert the image and then you right-click view alt text. Now, if you had copied the image from Google Slides and it already had alt text, you'll see that the alt text got copied as it was. So I just copied the image, alt text came with it. So I didn't have to create it again. But there are two other things that you see when you go to alt text um, here. One of them is a button that says generate alt text for me. And we're going to try this now. And another one is this welcome to the accessibility tab. So this is a place on uh, Microsoft uh, products and Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, especially to let you know the tools that you need to make your presentation more accessible. So it helps you a little bit more. This is an example of another image that I inserted and it has text on it. So I, when some images are just decorative, they're just there for show, like the, they don't have, they don't add meaning to what we're trying to do. So this one's actually the logo of AUCCLT. And so it's not really adding meaning to the slides, but I do want people to know that it's there. So I'm not gonna mark it as decorative, which is an option here. Um, also, as you can see, Microsoft is telling you what good alt text is. You know, this is something that you describe the object uh, and its context to someone who's blind or low vision. You describe the subject in detail, the setting, the actions, interactions, other relevant information, but it should be one to two detailed sentences and not like three paragraphs or something, you know? And so when I asked it to generate alternate, alternative text, it only said a close-up of a logo and it wrote description automatically generated, but this is not a good logo. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a good description. It just said it's a logo, but it didn't say logo of what. And then we can either approve the alternative text or edit it. So I didn't approve it um, and I'm not gonna mark it as decorative. And I just wrote a close-up of a logo, which is what was automatically generated. And then I added the American University in Cairo Center for Learning and Teaching. I also tried it with, um, giving it an image that didn't have any text on it. And I generated the alternative text and it was pretty good. It said a group of people looking at a large scale gold coins, which is exactly what that image is. That's the most important message in that image. So I approved that alt text. 
And to do alt text on email, this is something that people often forget to do. They embed images in email and then they don't um, provide the alternative text for it. And they don't actually even provide the information in some other form. So people who are using a screen reader cannot see what's in the image. I personally actually to save bandwidth when I'm checking my email on my phone, I don't even have images turned on. So I'd have to download the image to see the information. Whereas if they had alt text, I'd be able to see that too. So when you're creating a new email, uh, there's an icon here at the bottom, uh, insert photo, looks like an image of a portrait. And then you upload it. There's so many different ways you can get from photos, albums. I usually upload an image and I put it in line, not as an attachment. So when you insert that, that's what it looks like. And when you click on it, you don't have to right click, just clicking on it. There are different options like small, best fit, original size, and then there's edit alt text. So if you click on that, what it automatically sees is the description it automatically puts in, which is the name of the file. So if you're already naming your files in ways that are meaningful, this will look close to what you need to put in the alternative text. In my case, it just says equity from DALI, so that's not very descriptive. So I edited that to say a group of people looking at a scale filled with gold coins. It's the same image we were looking at earlier. And then you click apply and that's it. And then people who get the email will see it. Blackboard and Canvas uh, as learning management systems both have a system for including alternative text. So when you're adding an image uh, on Blackboard, as soon as you open that page, you'll have the name for the image and you'll have alt text. You just fill that box. And then there's a longer description because assuming that sometimes in a class, it's a diagram that's really complicated that has a lot of details that won't fit into the alternative text. So you can describe it further here. Canvas is equally easy to do. So again, if you're creating a page and you have images on the page, you click insert image. And then when you're uploading your image, there is a space here to describe the image in the alt text. That's it.